All right, we're here at CES, and look who I found. This is Leon from Gigabyte. You guys know how I feel about Gigabyte. I love Gigabyte. And what are you guys showing off here at CES? What's new? So right here, we actually have a variety of boards for, on display for you guys to see. This time around, we've actually focused a little bit more on the high-end desktop. So behind us, we actually have some of our boards here. Now, this one in particular, this is a high-end desktop board that we're marketing out right now, and it actually supports a Xeon processor. Not only that, this board actually supports ECC as well. We actually see the market trending towards a lot of syst uh, system users that want to move towards that high-end desktop where they're using for content creation, either video streaming or they want to create home videos. Or we also have people using it for gaming as well. So a lot of different variety, people who want to use for computational uses or even to relax or have fun with. So. Aside from all the boards you see back here behind us, even to the side, we also have different systems created by various integrators as well. We also have one made by ABS. So, Are these boards available now? They should be in the channel soon, so you guys should start seeing it near the beginning of February or even the end of January. And right now we're looking at a variety of uh, about, looks like a half dozen boards, yeah. just in the in the Xeon space, yes. for the, that space between uh, a gaming system and a workstation. Uh, you've created kind of a new... Area. High desktop. That's exactly what we're looking at right now. So we don't, again, we don't want to focus purely on workstation or purely on gaming. This is something that we see the market trending toward high end desktop. People I like that. People who need that enthusiast level but want to go more server grade. We're all familiar with USB and, of course, the, the different iterations of USB. There's also Firewire and, of course, Intel's Thunderbolt. But we really haven't seen much actually happen with Thunderbolt. Now, Thunderbird's had several versions. I think they're up to Thunderbird, Thunderbolt 3, is it? Correct. So and right. now you guys are, are now implementing that technology in your boards? Yes, so we've actually had Thunderbolt in, uh, in our previous generation boards, but with the 100 series, we've actually implemented Thunderbolt 3 on board, and even for some of you guys, some of you users out there that have seen our CES footage where we talked about our gaming G1, our gaming GT, or gaming 7, that time we were not Thunderbolt certified. Now that we are, these three boards, you can actually enable the Thunderbolt 3 functionality just by using a BIOS update. So it's the same connector as, it's a USB Type-C connector. Correct. But the advantage of the Thunderbolt interface is what? It's a lot faster. So USB Type-C, uh, the USB Type-C connector is the new connector, the world's next universal connector for USB as well as Thunderbolt. Now USB 3.1 utilizes this USB Type-C connector, but its limitations are at 10 gigabits per second. Thunderbolt, it has a limitation of 40 gigabits per second, so that's already, from you can see on the chart behind us, that's already four times the speed of USB 3.1. Now you actually have a demo set up here with a PCIe NVMe drive, and you have it hooked up through the Type-C connector on the Thunderbolt. And what kind of uh, transfer rates are we seeing on that? We're transferring a 75 gigabyte file and we're getting transfer speeds of up to 850 megabytes per second. So now to put that in perspective, a, a standard mechanical portable two and a half inch USB drive will transfer on a USB 3 connector about I'd say 130 megabytes a second. Mm -hmm. And the number you gave again? 850. Yeah, so there's a little bit of a speed difference there. Big speed jump, yeah. One of the other great products that Gigabyte is known for is their Bricks series of ultra-compact PCs. Yes, this is a fully functional computer, very powerful, in fact, maybe more powerful than your own desktop PC you're watching this video on, believe it or not. Now you have in your hands, what are the guts, what's inside of this? Correct, so this is an open casing of a previous generation Bricks. As you can see, it's very small. It can be an i7, i5, or i3. Um, it takes two DIMMs of sodium memory. It has a mini PCIe, which we populate with Bluetooth and wireless. And then we leave you an MSATA area, uh, MSATA connector for storage. This is what we like to call the classic. Um, this version, of course, is a little bit different, but this size, this form factor that doesn't support that 2.5 inch drive is what we like to call the classic. The other version which we have up here, you can actually see it's a little bit taller, and those will actually support a 2.5 inch drive in addition to your MSATA drive in traditional Brixes. With the new generation, we've actually done a lot of changes. So we basically redesigned the entire exterior. Uh, with this one, we've actually changed the glossy feel away from it. Uh, we've actually stepped away from the gloss, gloss exterior, and we've switched it over to a brushed aluminum feel. Now, this helps in the sense that there's less fingerprints. Yes. 
Thank you for that, by the way. We've also changed the power button location, so it's angled in the corner with a different design as well. With the Skylake bricks, these aren't the only changes. It's not only on the exterior, but on the interior. We've actually changed the storage connectivity from M SATA to M.2, so you get that faster transfer speed. We still include wireless and Bluetooth, but our Bluetooth is now Bluetooth 4.2 on several models, so you guys have to check online, make sure you have the one that's Bluetooth 4.2, but we're always following up with the newest standards in technology out there. And these are still VESA mountable, meaning that you can actually hook it up behind your monitor and out of sight, right? Correct. So if you can actually see on our display here, we actually have two that are VESA mounted in that fashion. So for all of our bricks currently out in the channel right now, uh, the ones that you guys see at Newegg.com, basically it'll come as a unit itself, it'll come with the processor that you guys have chosen, but you still need to get memory and storage. So storage would be your M.2. Memory, depending on the version, the ones without the USB 3.1 or the Thunderbolt would be DDR3L, and then the ones with Thunderbolt or um, USB 3.1 would be DDR4. So, newest generation of DDR as well. Using the laptop style SO DIMM memory. Correct. I think some people dismiss these very quickly by looking at it going, well, that's too weak. They, I think Raspberry Pi comes to mind. And I, I want to make sure people are very clear that this is, in most cases, for, for the average user, more powerful than the average user's desktop, at least the ones that I work on. Now, these current lineup, is, are, they, are they available now? Yes, you guys should be able to see some at Newegg.com. Uh, some of the newer ones, like the Thunderbolt 3, you guys might find a little bit later. Uh, same as the USB 3.1, you might find a little bit later as well. So check back often. All right. Well, thanks very much.